Hello there, everybody! I'm Mr. GamePie. Um, as many of you who typically watch my content know, I typically play games that I'm good at. Games that I'm very effective at playing. And, uh, failure occasionally happens, but isn't something that is typically a key element of any particular series that I do. But today I'm trying an experiment, and I'm playing one of the most classically difficult genres of video game to exist. The Bullet Hell Shooter. And uh, in particular, this game is Toho Tin, Mountain of Faith. Toho is a classic Bullet Hell Shooter game. Uh, they've been around since, like, the mid-90s, I believe. And these days, there's like 15 of these games. and it, It's kind of like the Mega Man series, where it's like every single game in the series introduces like six new characters. So, yeah, the, the game has a lot of characters in it, but uh, right now I'm playing as the main protagonist of the series, and I'm inevitably going to pronounce things incorrectly because this game is incredibly Japanese, and I am not Japanese whatsoever. So I'm going to be pronouncing your name is Rimu. I think... I think that's it. Maybe. But yes, while the bullet hell genre is classically one of the most difficult video game genres out there, uh, this particular iteration of it is considered one of the easiest Toho games in the series. Although notably, this wasn't the first Toho game that I tried. The first Toho game that I tried was Toho 12. Uh, Unidentified Flying Object, or... No, that's not it. <laughs> Undefined Fantastic Object. And that one... That's one of the hardest games in the series, apparently, so that was a bad idea. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as you can see here... Uh, basically, the uh, the plot of this game is Rimu is a shrine maiden, and uh, there's a new shrine in town that basically threatened her. Said, you know, all your followers are bel belong to us now. That's not exactly what it says, but okay. Wow, I'm getting hit already. And so uh, she's she's going out there to uh, see what the heck is going on and to basically claim her turf. Essentially. Now, Remu is not the only playable character. Uh, there's also another character, a witch known as Marissa, and uh, she essentially has the same plot. Like, she and Remu are kind of friends. They, they fight a lot, but I, I'm pretty sure that they qualify as friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Marissa's basically doing the same thing. But uh, the difference between the playable characters. Uh, there, there's a couple differences. First of all, both of them have two different weapons that they can use. Now, uh, over on the right, you can see that there's a high score, score, player, and power. Uh, the stars next to player are my lives, and as you can see, my power is up to five. Um, for each unit of power, I get a little yin-yang ball thing that's floating around Rimu down there. And uh, the yin-yang balls... They fire off homing shots, because that's the weapon that I have uh, Rimu using right now. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, this is essentially the easy mode of the game. Rimu is a bit slower than Marissa is. And, uh, you know, uh, most of her, her two different weapons, one is a homing shot and one is kind of a spread shot. So you can more easily focus on dodging bullets rather than trying to focus on actively attacking bosses or enemies or anything like that. Uh, Marissa, meanwhile, she is a faster character, making it easier to run around, but it's a little bit harder to control in that regard. So you might end up ramming yourself straight into a series of bullets instead of, you know, floating around them. And all of Marissa's shot types are more focused, so she'll do, dam she'll do more damage, she'll beat bosses faster, but you do have to constantly be in front of them, rather than just wherever. <laughs> That is the thing about Rimu, though, is that uh, she is... Her, her attacks tend to be weaker than Marissa's, so... It's sort of a... Uh, it's a toss-up between do you want to beat bosses faster, or do you want to focus on just dodging everything? And as someone who is not particularly used to this genre, I'm focused on dodging everything! <laughs> now, here's one of the characters that actually made me play this game, because that's the thing about Toho is that compared to other bullet hell shooters, it is not as mechanically uh, sound, I guess you could say. It's not as complex or as, you know, uh, heavy in techniques and stuff. But the area that Toho really shines is its characters. 
whereas most most bullet hell shooters are basically just raw difficulty. Nothing. There's like no plot. It's pretty much just, hey, you want to dodge bullets? Play this game. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. Oh, there we go. There's the game over. Let's uh, let's let's try to get back over to Hina again. So here we are back at Hina again. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying, most, most Bullet Hell games are raw difficulty, but Toho really is defined by its characters. And, uh, so you get a short little, you know, sequence where you talk to them a little bit, and, uh, then their bullet patterns are generally th themed on, you know, whatever, whatever they are. So, Hina here, she's a misfortune goddess. She, uh, takes the misfortunes of others, and basically just takes them away, and that's, that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, she's one of the main reasons why I decided to play this game, because, uh, you know, I, I do often listen to the Toho music, and I really like both her stage theme and her boss theme. And, uh, you know, she's just, uh, she seemed like a kind of a cool character. On top of that, there's another character or two that appear later on down the line that are also pretty neat. That's also the reason why I chose uh, UFO as the very first game that I tried, because it has a character in there named Nazarin, and she is a mouse girl, and I love rodents. Rodents are beautiful. They're great. Also, the final boss of that game has an amazing theme, which uh, is pretty cool. Too bad the game is, like, one of the hardest. <laughs> but, uh, hey, yeah, Hina's she's, she's firing off bullets. Uh, that's the thing, is that her one of Hina's big deals is spinning, mainly because uh, I believe the Japanese kanji for misfortune looks like a spiral. So she spins around a lot, and a lot of her bullets spiral outwards in regards of that. Alright, now here's a pretty good song. The Jinsokyo the Gods Loved. Like I said, I promise pronouncing everything here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this is not one of the songs that I was aware of existing before playing the game, but it's pretty cool. People often consider this to be the theme for Jinsokyo, which is the setting of the series. I believe it's Japanese for Wonderland, I think? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, you know, I uh, I got a game over on stage two, which is not good. There are six stages in the game, and, I mean, we haven't even hit the difficulty spike yet. Like, stage four is the difficulty spike. That's where things get hard. There we go. As one might expect, I might go a little bit quiet during this series occasionally, because, hey, dodging bullets is a thing. <laughs> it is a big thing. You have to dodge all the bullets. All right, so here's somebody. That's the thing, the vast majority of the characters in this series aren't human. A lot of them are yokai, which, I mean, hey, yeah, yokai watch is a big thing these days, so maybe people actually know what those are. But uh, as far as I can tell, they seem to just sort of be a ter a general term for a monster. Uh, from what I can understand, it seems like it's often translated as demon in English, but that doesn't seem accurate, because demons are a very specific thing. And yokai are not a very specific thing. They're just sort of there. Like, I mean, you know, vampires and werewolves in this series have been referred to as yokai. Zombies have been referred to as yokai. There's just like ba basically anything. But yeah, uh, the girl that we're interacting with in this game, in this uh, level here, she is a kappa, which is sort of a water-dwelling turtle-y thing, and uh, she's pretty cool. Uh, I believe her name is Nitori, and uh, in particular, she seems to utilize technology, uh, which is. Rather unique within Toho, because even though it technically does, it is supposed to exist within modern day, the realm of Jinsokyo is sort of uh, sheltered off from the rest of the world. It's sort of in its own little bubble that nobody can surpass. A barrier, if you will. And uh, as a result, it's sort of stuck in time far into the past. So technology isn't typically a big thing in this world. But here we have Nithari, and uh, she had this whole, like, stealth camouflage suit that was making her somewhat invisible before. But that didn't really play into her particular uh, bullet patterns, as far as I could tell. Now, unfortunately, because I don't really know much of anything about Kappa, I can't really say 
how her bullet themes are, or how her bullet patterns are thematic to that. It, uh, it all seems pretty arbitrary to me. <laughs> Alright, here we go. A lot of her patterns involve you zigzagging about. Alright, now this move, this move is a little bit, uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. Because, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess you could say that this is sort of like a giant wave of water that you gotta make your way through. At least that's how I interpret it. Maybe that's the thing, is that because it's making you go side to side constantly, it's supposed to be like waves of water. And now waves go side to side constantly. Alright, so these are lasers. Uh, they differ a little bit from bullets. Oh, there we go, there's a hit. Lasers tend to be lines of damage, whereas bullets are points of damage. They, they everything still kills you though, so I guess... And that doesn't change! <laughs> oh, hamsters. Alright, there we go. Got it! Okay, here we go. On to stage four. Like I said earlier, this is where the difficulty spike occurs. Now, one thing that exists in this series is a thing known as a bomb. And bombs basically uh, are a big, giant super attack that will generally cover the screen and will destroy all bullets on the screen. Oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, you generally need to use bombs whenever uh, you get trapped and you can't, uh, you can't find a way out, or if you believe that you're about to die. All right, here we go. We're back. And, uh, yeah, bombs are a little bit interesting in this game because normally bombs are sort of... There we go, there's a bomb. Bombs are sort of a separate thing. They're, they're, they're their own item that you normally collect. But uh, in this game, they're actually tied to your power. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that... Uh, oh my gosh. This is just ridiculous. That uh, you can have up to five power... But, uh, I can only have up to four of the little yin-yang balls flying around Rimu. This is because, uh, you can store up an extra point of power to, uh, help you get extra bombs. Normally, uh, different characters will have different bomb types depending on what their current weapon is and, well, which character you're playing as. However, these specialized bombs don't exist in this particular game. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, there we go, that's a game over. <laughs>